Gospel for Today First Reading Ezekiel 9 verse 1 to 7 and 10 verse 18 to 22 Then he cried aloud for me to hear, Come, you scourges of the city. With that, I saw six men coming from the direction of the upper gate which faces the north, each with a destroying weapon in his hand. In their midst was a man dressed in linen, with a scribe's case at his waist. They entered and stood beside the bronze altar. Then he called to the man dressed in linen with the scribe's case at his waist, saying to him, Pass through the city, through Jerusalem, and mark a cross on the foreheads of those who moan and groan over all the abominations practiced within it. To the others I heard him say, Pass through the city after him and strike. Do not look on them with pity nor show any mercy. Old and young, girls and women and children, wipe them out. But do not touch anyone marked with the cross. Begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were in front of the temple. Defile the temple, he said to them, fill the courts with the slain. Then go out and strike in the city. Then the glory of the Lord left the threshold of the temple and rested upon the cherubim. The cherubim lifted their wings and rose from the earth before my eyes as they went forth, with the wheels alongside them. They paused at the entrance of the eastern gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of the God of Israel was up above them. These were the living creatures I had seen beneath the God of Israel on the river Chebar, whom I now recognized to be cherubim. Each had four faces and four wings, and something like human hands under their wings. Their faces looked just like those I had seen by the river Chebar, each one went straight forward. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 113 verse 1 to 6. Response. The glory of the Lord is above the heavens. Praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Both now and forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Let the name of the Lord be praised. High above all nations is the Lord. Above the heavens is His glory. Who is like the Lord our God? Enthroned on high. Looking down on the heavens and the earth. A reading from a holy gospel according to Matthew 18 verse 15 to 20. If your brother sins, against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have one over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, Amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. This passage emphasizes the importance of reconciliation, community, and the power of collective prayer. Jesus teaches about resolving conflicts within the community with patience, understanding, and ultimately, seeking unity. The assurance of His presence where two or three gather in His name highlights the significance of communal faith and prayer. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you Lord Jesus Christ. Reflection. Emphasizes the importance of reconciliation and the responsibility we have toward one another in the Christian community. Jesus' advice on dealing with someone who has sinned against you begins with a private conversation. 
This step highlights the importance of addressing issues directly and privately, avoiding unnecessary public exposure or embarrassment. It's a call to approach others with a spirit of love, not condemnation, seeking to restore rather than alienate. If the private approach doesn't work, Jesus encourages us to involve one or two others. This step introduces the concept of community support and accountability. It shows that the path to reconciliation isn't a solitary journey, it involves others who can offer wisdom and mediate peace. The presence of witnesses also ensures fairness and clarity in the process. Should these efforts fail, the matter is to be brought before the church, the larger community of believers. This final step underscores the seriousness of the sin and the collective responsibility of the community to uphold righteousness and unity. Jesus' instruction to treat the unrepentant person as a Gentile or tax collector reflects a sober reality, sometimes, despite all efforts, reconciliation isn't possible, and separation may be necessary. However, it's important to remember how Jesus treated Gentiles and tax collectors, with love and a desire for their conversion. The final verses of the passage are a powerful reminder of the strength found in communal prayer and the presence of Jesus in our midst when we gather in His name. This underscores the importance of unity and collective action within the Church. When we agree in prayer, we align our wills with God's, and our prayers hold power. In our daily lives, this passage challenges us to take responsibility for our relationships, to seek reconciliation actively, and to remember that Christ is present when we come together in His name. It also encourages us to trust in the power of prayer and the strength of community, knowing that in our collective faith, Christ is always with us. In the first reading Ezekiel presents a vivid and intense vision of God's judgment on Jerusalem. The marking of the foreheads of the faithful signifies God's protection over those who remain loyal and mourn the evil practices around them. The subsequent command to the destroyers to spare no one except those marked highlights the severity of God's judgment on sin and corruption. The departure of the glory of the Lord from the temple in the second part of the reading symbolizes the withdrawal of God's presence due to the people's unfaithfulness. The vision of the cherubim, with their majestic and mysterious appearance, reflects the awe-inspiring nature of God's holiness and the gravity of His actions. This reading calls us to examine our own lives in light of God's justice and mercy. It reminds us of the importance of fidelity to God, even in the midst of widespread corruption, and the protection that comes from being marked as His own. The withdrawal of God's glory from the temple serves as a sobering reminder that God does not dwell where there is persistent sin and rebellion, calling us to repentance and faithfulness. Psalm 113 is a hymn of praise that extols the majesty and glory of God. It calls all servants of the Lord to bless His name, emphasizing the eternal nature of His greatness. The response, the glory of the Lord is above the heavens, reminds us of God's transcendence and His sovereign power over all creation. The psalm also portrays God as both high and exalted, yet also caring and attentive to the world He created. It invites us to recognize and honor God's greatness in every aspect of our lives, from the rising to the setting of the sun. This psalm encourages a posture of continual praise and awe, acknowledging God's unmatched authority and His loving concern for humanity. Reflecting on this psalm, we are reminded to keep God at the center of our lives, offering Him our praise and trust, knowing that His glory surpasses all and that He is ever watchful over us. Prayer for Today We come before you with humble hearts, grateful for the gift of this day. As we gather in your presence, we ask that you open our minds and hearts to your word, that we may be guided by your wisdom and strengthened by your love. 
We thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who shows us the way of reconciliation, forgiveness, and community. May we reflect his light in all we do. Heavenly Father, Merciful Lord, we acknowledge our shortcomings and sins. Too often, we allow pride, anger, and selfishness to guide our actions, causing harm to ourselves and others. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we have failed to seek reconciliation with those we have wronged or who have wronged us. Help us to approach others with humility and love, seeking peace and unity in our relationships. Cleanse our hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Lord Jesus, you teach us the importance of community and the power of collective prayer. We ask for your guidance as we strive to live according to your teachings. Grant us the courage to confront sin and injustice with love, the wisdom to seek counsel when we are unsure, and the strength to persevere in our efforts to build a community rooted in your love and truth. When we gather in your name, may we always be aware of your presence among us, guiding our thoughts, words, and actions. Gracious God, we pray for unity within our families, communities, and the Church. In a world often divided by conflict and misunderstanding, help us to be instruments of your peace. May we always seek to understand others, to listen with compassion, and to speak with kindness. Where there is division, let us sow seeds of harmony, where there is discord, let us bring reconciliation. May our lives be a testimony to the power of your love at work in the world. Lord, we lift up to you the needs of our world. We pray for those who are suffering from illness, poverty, and injustice. Comfort those who are grieving, heal those who are sick, and provide for those in need. We ask for your blessing upon our leaders, that they may govern with wisdom, justice, and compassion. We pray for the Church, that it may be a beacon of hope and love in the world, faithfully proclaiming your gospel and serving those in need. Almighty God, as we go forth from this time of prayer, we ask that you continue to guide and protect us. May we carry the lessons we have learned today into our daily lives, seeking always to do your will and to serve others with love and humility. We entrust our lives, our hopes, and our fears into your loving hands, confident that you are with us in all things. We ask all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please do like and share. Thank you so much.